which you guys today we're taking a look at how to turn a DAS into a NAS with a mini PC. This is the TerraMaster D4320U. This is everything you're going to get inside the box. Now, this is not a network attached storage. This is a direct attached storage. So there's no Ethernet port on this. But I'm going to show you how we can get this and turn it into a NAS. So what we're going to do here is we've got our starter guide and user manual right here. We've got our power plug and our power adapter right here to power the actual DAS right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get all this set up. We will have a type C connection on this uh, so we can go from this to a mini PC because we're going to be using a mini PC as a server because that's how we can turn this into a network attached storage. There's a couple of extra handles here to go on to the actual unit itself. And here is our cable, which we're going to use to go from the actual DAS to a server. So what we're going to do here is set all this up. Now you can also plug this into a NAS or network attached storage. And what this will do is it allow you to expand the storage on that network attached storage device. So we've got some ventilation on the top here. As you can see, this is a rack mounted device. They do other ones that look like a uh, network attached storage is standard one, but you can see we've got our brackets right here and we've got a four bay uh, section right here. We've got a power button, bit of ventilation here. So we're going to populate this with a couple of drives. So to populate this, we just push the button and open the actual drive caddy here. And what this is going to do is allow us to put in the drive inside here. So I'll open it up so I can show you inside. There's not much to these because basically this is an expansion unit really to expand uh, your network attached storage device. On the back, we have our power, some fans, and also our type C port right here, which is what's going to connect this to the actual uh, network attached storage or server so we can expand that storage. So here we have our type C port 10 Gbps speeds on this particular port as well. So we've got 440 millimeters long and we also have 45 millimeters high. So there is our hard drive uh, caddy right here made of metal got some ventilation on there as well. So we're going to screw these drives into here. Now you can put two and a half inch drives or three and a half inch drives inside this particular cage as well. It takes four drives, 88 terabytes of maximum storage capacity on this particular device can be used. So that's going to be great for people that want to expand their storage. So what we want to do is just get some drives out and populate a couple of these just to show you how we can access these on the network. Because as it stands right now, if you plug this into uh, you know, any sort of device like a PC or anything like that, you're not going to be able to access it on the network. It's just going to be used as an external storage uh, as it stands right now because there's no Ethernet port on here. So let's quickly take a look inside. I'm going to remove some screws here, but it's basically like a giant enclosure. That's what it looks like with a little tiny motherboard in the back there to control the actual drives. But you'll see what it looks like in a second. And there we have the inside right here. So you just got four drive bays here with the uh, SATA connections on there as well on the actual back of the enclosure. And you can see there's a cable running around from the power button here to the main board at the back. There's your bays right here. Again, these can populate three and a half inch and two and a half inch. There's your little connector here that's going to go into the actual drive. You've got access to fans here if you need to upgrade the fans or clean the fans or anything like that you can do here. So there is the cable for the power button that goes around and also controls on the board here as well. So I'm gonna use a couple of drives here just to show you. Now it does have four drive bays here, but we're just gonna populate two for this video. So I'm gonna screw this in and slot it into the actual drive bay here. Now with these particular types of units here you need to make sure that you're pushing down on the actual cage itself not the handle because it's not going to lock it needs to lock into position then click the catch down and that's fully inserted into the actual unit now for our server we're going to use the a5 geekom this is the very new release from geekom here this is a very affordable uh, 
mini PC, this is exactly what you're going to get inside the box. You're going to get your VESA mount here, your HDMI cable, some screws, a user manual, and your warranty card right here as well. You can see it's all in color and also English text and other languages. We also have our power adapter here as well with an English plug. Depending where you are in the world, you'll get a different plug for your country. And there's the specifications. It's a very low power draw on this unit right here. And we also get the mini PC itself. Now, what we're going to do is we're not going to fire this up and put, because uh, this comes with Windows 11 Pro, we're going to be using, uh, you know, a software on here, which is going to be for our server. So here is the actual mini PC. I'll go through some of the specs here. So on the front, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports. We have two of those and a power button. On this side, we also have an SD card reader with some ventilation. And on the other side, there's just a Kenston lock on this side here with some ventilation. And this does come pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro, but we're not going to be using uh, that in today's video. Now, on the back of the device, we have a dual HDMI 2.0 port right there. So it's two of those. And we have also a USB 3.2 Gen 2 uh, port there. That's the two Type-C ports. We have two of those. And we have a USB 2.0 Type-A port and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port on there as well. Now you can have up to four monitors, up to 8K resolution on this particular device. This does come with Radium Vega 8 graphics as well and a Ryzen 7 5825U processor. So let's get into the bottom of this. We just need to undo these four screws so we can gain access in here. Now this is a very affordable mini PC. We've got room for a two and a half inch drive here. We can put a drive in here for extra storage if we want to, which is going to be nice as well. Now inside the unit, this does have uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM dual channel, and it does support up to 64 gigabytes of dual channel DDR4 RAM in this particular device. It has Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2, comes pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro, but we're going to be uh, swapping it out for another operating system like Open Media Vault or TrueNAS or something like that. Now, this is a budget mini PC, so you're not going to get top end gear inside here. You can see, I'm not sure what make that is there, if you can make that out. But again, we've got uh, an NVMe drive in here as well. And that is a very small 512 gigabyte drive, but you can put up to two terabytes of storage on there as well. And there's an expansion there as well for another NVMe drive. So let's quickly recap. This is what we're going to be using this DAS here, which is from TerraMaster. So there's no Ethernet port on here, but you can run Linux, Windows, Proxmox, TrueNAS, or Unraid on here as well on this mini PC, and we'll be able to connect to it. So this is the actual mini PC. It's £279, which is pretty cheap for a Ryzen 7 5825U, which is a Zen 3 architecture, 8 core, 16 threads and Vega 8 graphics on here. But this is going to be ideal for what we're going to be using because we're going to be installing Open Media Vault. So I'm going to go ahead and get Open Media Vault installed onto this mini PC. So I've chosen Open Media Vault and domain name is going to be uh, local. So we're going to just navigate down to the continue button. I have made a full tutorial on this so you can check out my channel. We need to create a root password for the device. So let me go ahead and put one of those in right here. This is uh, your admin root password so you want to make sure this is a really secure password for you so i'm going to go ahead and do that right here and we can then click on continue and move on to the next step i'll speed this process up so here we need to set up users and passwords so i'll just need to uh, enter the password again and verify it so let's go ahead and click continue and now what we need to do is it's just going to detect the hardware on the mini pc and it's going to start it up. It says partitioning disks right here. I don't have the direct attached storage plugged into the mini PC at this stage, but it can detect other drives and that will be my USB drive. So we're going to start the initialization. And what we're going to do here is partition our disks. I'm going to select, you can see the 4, 4C there. That is the NVMe drive. And that is the 512 gigabyte with Windows 11 Pro on it. So we're going to overwrite that and use 
Open Media Vault on that drive. It's going to partition and format these drives. It's going to start to install the system onto that particular drive that we've chosen. So we're going to let that go and let it install. And once this is all done, we can move on to choosing our country here, which is closest to us. I'm going to go United Kingdom and press enter and move on with the installation. So next we can choose. I'm just going to choose the top one for Debian.org. That'll be fine. And now we can configure the package manager right here. So HTTP proxy, I'm just going to leave that blank and it's going to configure the rest of this right here. So let that do its thing. And once that's done, we can move on to the next step. And we're nearly there. So what we're going to do here next is let it go to installing the grub boot loader for our system. So this will take a bit of time to let it do its thing. And now we've finished the installation and we can reboot the system. You need to remove the USB flash drive. And once it reboots, you should see something looking like this, which is the Open Media Vault login. We can head over to our PC now. Go to that IP address and you should see something looking like this. The default is admin and the password is open media vault, all one word. You need to change this once you logged in because obviously this is just the default uh, username and password that they set up for open media vault. So now we've logged in, you can now start to configure open media vault to your liking. So you've got your dashboard, you can configure this right here. I'm not going to make this a super duper in-depth tutorial on how to configure Open Media Vault because I've made a video on that before, but I'm just going to get this up and running so we can use that direct attached storage from TerraMaster on the local network. So I'm going to check mark some of these widgets here like CPU, utilization, and there's a bunch of them here. These are just going to be on your dashboard. You can check mark whatever you like here, smart status and stuff like that. This is all good information for you to select. So just choose what you like here uh, to display on your dashboard. And it should look something like this when you've done all of that. You should have some sort of display on your dashboard. So now we're going to have to do some other settings here. We need to run some updates on this particular device. So let's go and do all of the updates because there's probably going to be quite a few updates for Open Media Vault. It's always best to keep it fully updated. So you can see updates right here. I'm going to go to the download and I can see there's a massive big list of updates on there with the yellow uh, circle there. So let's go ahead, confirm this, click yes, and this will go off and do all of the updates for us. Once it's done your updates, you'll need to restart the device and we're going to go ahead and now log in. You can see pending uh, configuration changes. You always have to do this and check mark this right here and this will make confirm the changes that you've just made to the system. So once you've done this, you can then set it up. So basically you need to set up your file system, your shares, and also your users and things like that uh, on Open Media Vault. It's pretty straightforward. There's plenty of literature online showing you how to do it. There's plenty of videos to show you how to set this up. And I've made videos myself. So what you got is uh, right here, you can change the password, which is always best to do. So I'm going to go ahead and change the default password from Open Media Vault to something more secure. Now, don't use a simple four digit password or five digit password like this. You want to use a big, long, strong password because this is your local network that someone can guess and gain access to it. So what we're going to do is quickly put a big password in here and click save and it will remove the open media vault password. You probably have to log out and log back in again. But once you've done that, we can then move on to the next step. So what I'm going to do next is we're going to create a file system for open media vault. So we can go into storage here and we can see right here under file systems, I'm going to go ext4 and we can now select the drive that we want to use. So let's go ahead and choose one of these drives here. Now you can set up RAID on uh, on Open Media Vault as well if you want to set up a RAID, which I would advise you to do because redundancy is the best way to go. And you can install a plugin and this will allow you to set up a RAID configuration on your device. So what we're going to do is pending changes need to be done. So let me quickly check mark that right here. 
and we're getting near the end where you'll be able to access this stuff on the local network. I'm trying to keep all the important stuff in so you can see. So what we've done here, you got this one done. So let's move on to the next stage. So inside system here, if you look in plugins and you look in here for multiple or something like that, you will see a plugin which will allow you to set up RAID if you wanted to set up RAID on your system. So if you have more than two drives, you have four drives, five drives, or whatever amount of drives you've got in your system, you can install this on the system and it's going to allow you to be able to set up your RAID settings. So let me just quickly install this and I'll show you quickly what it is. I'm not going to set it up in this video, but I'll just quickly show you here. And there's a few other plugins you can download and install on your server to make it easier for yourself. And there's loads of tutorial online. So I'm going to quickly log out. And when we go back inside here, you should see there will be there underneath the storage area. There should be a multiple device now added in here. And when you click on that, it will allow you to set up a RAID. So let me go ahead and quickly add this all in. I've already set up the rest of it. And what I'm going to do here is going to navigate to our PC, uh, not our server. This is a PC on our local network. And we're going to scan for a network uh, drive here. And we're going to see if we can pick up our uh, drive. So let's go ahead and do that right here. And we can turn this uh, direct attached storage into a network attached storage by just using this simple method. Now you can use whatever software you want for your server there's tons of them out there like unraid true nas or whatever it is you want so there it is right there open media vault we can click on this unless you've made your name different and i've spelt that wrong that should say storage but you get the general idea we can click here and give it a name we can give it a name of storage if we want to let me just go ahead and change that path to something a bit shorter so let's go ahead and do that right here and uh, I keep doing that and missing the R. There we go. And what we need to do is click Next. And we can now click Finish. And that should now make that open on our network. And there you go. You just turned a, a direct attached storage device, which doesn't have an Ethernet port. We've used the mini PC as our server. And now we can access all of that data on our local network. And you can install whatever you like on it, Plex or any sort of file sharing, camera systems, all that sort of stuff. And it's that simple. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. If you find this video useful, then give it a thumbs up and leave a comment and let me know what you think. Quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next video or see you on the Discord server. Bye for now.